There's always confusion when we flash backwards in time. It's currently September, but our story begins last December, just before a big snowstorm. My snowplow is an old Oliver 1650 tractor, and every time I plow snow with it, it is a fight. It's an old tractor, it's got a ton of hours on it, it leaks every fluid from every orifice, it doesn't like to start when it's cold, doesn't like to stay running when it's cold. The loader is probably too big for it and the power steering isn't strong enough. But there's a couple of unique Oliver design features that make them poorly suited for use with a loader, at least in my opinion. The first one is the clutch. When you push down the clutch, the tractor stops, but there's still enough drag that you cannot get the transmission out of gear. I've tried adjusting it. Apparently it's a super common problem and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just a quirk of the multi-speed clutch setup and it makes it very unhandy when you're using a loader where you need to go forward and backward all the time. The other problem is the hydraulics. Oliver has this weird load check system where you have to have pressure to raise the loader and to lower the loader. And I don't know if mine's just old and worn or what the deal is, but you can easily get into a situation where you have enough pressure to lift a load, but you do not have enough pressure to overcome the load check and lower the load. And then when it does lower, it just slams down and jerks really, really badly. There's no way to, to use those hydraulics smoothly. That was really just a long-winded excuse to go shopping at the local farm equipment auction. This 1845 case would be ideal. These are really nice machines, but I think it's going to be out of my price range. This Bobcat would work. Actually looks pretty decent. The problem is it has foot controls, which I do not care for. I'm a tall guy, I got big feet. Foot controls are pretty uncomfortable. I think my two best options are this Thomas Skid Steer or this 755 John Deere tractor. The 755 is rusty, it's also missing the side panels, but it looks okay mechanically. Pretty low hours really. It is four wheel drive and it has a plow, but it does not have a loader. That's kind of a big deal. The loaders are really hard to find and they're expensive. You might pay more for a loader than you would for the tractor itself. These are nice tractors though. Diesel engine, hydrostat, it's got a three point hitch so you got tons of attachment options. I don't know much about the Thomas. It appears to be a Canadian built copy of an older Bobcat. Maybe like an 843, the older one before they turned the engine sideways. It's got high hours, but it's a Kubota engine so that might not be a big deal. It does have standard H pattern controls. It looks pretty beefy. The bidding is all online and the Thomas sells first, so I'm going to bid on that. If I don't get the Thomas, I'll bid on the 755. Maybe. We might have to switch over to dial up. Well, there it is. Yes. We paid for it, we own it. Yeah, that's okay. Let's get it on here. We'll get going. They're not very busy, really. I wouldn't know what to break, no. No, it doesn't look too bad. I'm tired of the shot. He, uh, he told me we're probably gonna, have to, probably gonna have to jump it, so we came prepared.
Do you want to leave it running? Yeah, for the moment. All right, we'll let it run. We finally got some snow. It's actually currently snowing. I think there's enough out there we can play around with the skid steer, do a little plowing. But you might want to brace yourselves for what I'm about to tell you. It won't start. No surprise. He told me it wouldn't start when I went to pick it up. They actually used a, a gas powered jump start unit to get it started. It won't even try to pass a load test. So that's junk. No surprise. I think they sold somewhere around 5,000 lots on that auction. I bet there wasn't a single good battery in the catalog. I don't know why, but they chose to put the battery in a hatch behind the seat, which is not very handy. There's your negative battery cable. There's your negative battery terminal. That's not gonna work. Melted it right off. It's gonna need new battery cables, but until I can get that done, I'm gonna go ahead and throw one of these crappy repair terminals on it. Somebody's already done it for the positive side. It's kind of melted too. I don't know, that's what happens when you run batteries down too far. That's how people ruin starters and melt cables and stuff. The voltage gets too low and then the current gets too high and then pretty soon things are in puddles. My buddy Mike Simon, Mr. Mr. Dirt Perfect, he always says, first thing he looks for on a used piece of equipment is the original battery hold down bracket. If it has the battery hold down, there's a good chance somebody took care of it. Which is a pretty good, pretty good clue, I have to say. But, on the other hand, I don't think I've ever owned a piece of equipment that had the original battery hold down bracket. Someday. not too melted. Oh, that one's half inch. This one's 12 millimeter. Stupid Chinese. Sorry, right, it's only temporary unless it works. There we go. All right, do we have power? Yes. Good. put some pressure on the cooling system and it looks like let's see if I can get you guys in here looks like it's just that hose
might be an easy fix. Yeah, somebody's got this all janked up. Got a Mortski approved flexi hose and they added some kind of a hose heater here. So, while we're at it, might as well get rid of that stuff. It's a piece of galvanized pipe. A kindly viewer sent me this sweet CS Osborne hose pick. Might have been Eric Course, maybe? Can't remember. Thanks to whoever it was. Well, there's your problem. It's got a hole in it. It's all puffy and squishy and the layers have come apart. It's no good. I ordered a new molded hose, but I won't have it for a couple of days. And we got more snow coming, so we're gonna try to jerry-rig it. I've got this PCV hose, I think it is. It's 15, 30 seconds ID. It's pretty similar size. We're gonna chop a piece of it off and see if we can jam it in there without kinking it too badly. See if we can get this guy running again. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's completely kinked. I mean, the only thing we could do is come out and make a big kind of a curly Q loop. But I think we better just wait for the real part to show up. The problem, of course, with an off-brand machine like this is it's hard to get parts. They don't have a very good dealership network. I think there might be a Thomas dealership somewhere in Illinois. It's not anywhere near here. I have no idea if they have parts in stock or if there's a warehouse in the US or everything comes from Canada or what things cost. Doesn't matter. I mean, if this was a deer or a bobcat, we could just nip down to the local dealership and get whatever we needed, which is very convenient, but you also, you know, you pay a premium for that convenience. Anyway, I went to the Deco catalog and I just found some hoses that I think might work. So there's a half inch bypass hose. We'll have to trim the ends off, but it should do the trick. And then we're gonna replace this monstrosity with a regular elbow. And then we're gonna install a, a true block heater. The only problem is that gets installed in the back of the cylinder head. So we're gonna have to do a pretty good reach around to get that, get that installed. I also have a couple new battery cables. Not sure if we'll get to that today or not. All right, I managed to knock the, the core plug out with a punch and a hammer. Gave her the old reach around. So we're gonna install this block heater. According to Zero Start, we're supposed to install it at the two o'clock position, but everything is reversed. So I think that's like the 10 o'clock position for us. So something like that. I wish I could show you guys, but I can't even see it myself. I'm just going off of feel. Okay, new lower radiator. La Why is that so hard to say? Lower radiator hose is installed. Block heater installed, you can't see it. There's the cord coming out the top. And the water pump bypass hose is installed. Coolant's topped off. I think we're done under here for now. I pulled the seat out so I can look at the linkages. They're pretty sloppy. So it looks like that bolt's loose and then the same thing on the other side. So I wonder if I can just tighten those up. Or maybe there's gonna be a bushing we have to replace. I don't know what's going on with this thing here. That's not original. So this is like an interlock to keep the thing from moving on you when your when your bar is your safety bar isn't down. I don't know if we can just tighten this. Okay. So. That seems better. All right, let's try it.
it's cold today. Minus two degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's like minus 25 Celsius or somewhere in that range. There's this weird glowing orb in the sky. I can't recall ever seeing that before. Anyway, we're gonna test out this block heater. So I've got a device here called a kilowatt. So this gizmo is basically just an amp meter. Plugs in line with your normal electrical cord. If we can get it to plug in like so. Plug it in to the block heater. And then it's gonna tell us we have 120 volts. And it's currently pulling 3.6 amps. So that's what, 430 watts? It's a 400 watt block heater, so it's working just like it should. Well, the day slipped away from me. I forgot about the old skid steer here. Give her a little throttle. Give her a little glow plug. Skid steers are always really hard to start in the cold because they have a huge hydraulic load. Try a little more glow plug. I don't think she's gonna do it. I'll try it one more time. Nope. Well, that's a fail. Well, she looks pretty sad with a flat tire. That's right, we're pulling a Mortski. We're gonna put a Made in China tube inside our Made in Thailand tire and hope for the best. Just a typical Wednesday in the shop. We have to get our back to school haircut. Okay. It holds air. 
I didn't put a boot in it, so we'll see how long it lasts. Obviously these tires are junk, but we've got bigger problems to fix before we go spending $1,200 on new tires. Hey little buddy. See you built yourself a nice house in there. Well that solves part of the problem. Really? You got in there, pup. You can get out. Come on. Something is wonky with the linkages. When the safety bar is up, the machine wants to, well, it creeps a little bit, which is kind of annoying. I think the problem is these latches here engage when the safety bar is up. And I think, see how that bolt is kind of going through the, the lever arm crooked? I think it just was worn from being loose for so long. And we need to correct that. So I'm gonna see if I can get that lever off the side of the pump and we'll see if we can fix it. I'm not sure what we're gonna run into there. Looks like it's got a roll pin in it maybe. So it could be uphill getting that off. Actually, this is the easy one. The one in the back is gonna be tricky. I don't think that's correct. Maybe, I don't think so. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to do this. I thought I had it. I did. Now my punch is stuck. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, she's pretty wallowed out. The rear one's really not too bad. Probably should have just left it alone. But the front one is not so good. That's some impressive wear for something with basically no load on it. I had grandiose plans of welding this up or boring it out and putting in a bushing, but I'm pretty sure the linkage is symmetrical. This hole doesn't get used for anything. So it'd be a whole lot easier just to drill another hole over here and flip the linkage over. Can I get it right? The remnants of the rodents have been removed. I don't know why that's so hard to say. I also built a hold down bracket for the battery. Well, I bought one, but I had to modify it to work. And I installed our modified levers, but I wanted to replace the rod ends on the linkage. They're pretty sloppy on both ends. I got the heim joints, but McMaster did me dirty on the other ones. So we're kind of at a, at a stopping point. But that's okay, because you might want to brace yourself. I found a lot of other problems. The auxiliary couplings here leak pretty badly. They're also the wrong style. Those need to be replaced. The left side boom cylinder, it leaks pretty badly, needs to be rebuilt. But the big problem is the engine. It runs fine, but it just doesn't seem like it revs up high enough. So I finally put a photo tack on it, and sure enough, it only revs to about 1700 RPM. It should go up to about 2800, maybe almost 3000 RPM. And I tried adjusting it. There's a stop screw. I backed the stop screw out. Didn't make any difference. You can see on the linkage where someone's put some washers on there, trying to get it to, to travel further. Doesn't make any difference. Something's wrong with the internal governor. So I don't know if the spring is broken or it's possible someone has replaced the engine with an engine out of a 
generator or a reefer that was governed at a lower RPM. I've actually run into that before. So if anybody knows how to fix that, this is a Kubota V2203 engine. It's got a inline pump. I don't know if it's a Bosch or a Denso or if it's something made by Kubota or what the governor springs are or you know, what the procedure is. So if anybody can point me in the right direction for that, please do. And I guess we'll tackle those problems in part two. Thanks for watching. Industrial size hay burners.